All right, so last week we began a series called What's the Difference? What's the Difference? You know, I'm sure you've asked somebody before, they've told you to do something and you want to do it one way, you said, like, what's the difference in me doing it this way? Well, what's the difference? And I mean, this is part of the DNA of Praise Church. If you're new to Praise, this is part of who we are. We love God, we love people, and we want to make a, we want to make a difference. The question is, is what type of difference do you want to make? See, I, I'm convinced that you as an individual, too, that you want to make a difference. I think everybody wants to make a difference. But my question is, what is the difference that you want to make? You want to make a difference at school? You want to make a difference uh, at work, at home, your neighborhood? But what is the difference that you really want to make? Have you ever thought about what is the difference that I'm trying to make in somebody else's life? And then how do I go about that? So the tagline to that, what's the difference, is how small things can make a big difference. And sometimes, uh, to me, that's encouraging because sometimes we we will say, well, I don't have a lot of followers, I don't have a platform, I don't have status, I don't have a lot of authority. How could I make a big difference? Small things can make a very big difference. And actually, you are equipped, and God has given you the ability to make a big difference by being faithful to the small things that he's put right there in your hands. So last week we talked about how words are small things that make a big difference. And we can all remember words and go back and hear words that we wish were not said to us, but we can also go back and hear words that encouraged us and still feed us today. Small things that make a big difference. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to look at how when all of us Small people come together and contribute to one single cause, it can make a big difference. So what we contribute individually comes together and makes, makes a lot. And you know, when Hurricane Laura um, came to our area and went by, and we realized that we weren't affected by it, Beaumont, Lumberton, Sour Lake, this, this area... We then made a decision and said, we want to come alongside a church that has been affected. Because as you guys know, you, uh, many of you were affected by Hurricane Harvey. Our church was affected by it. And we had a church come alongside us from Oregon. How in the world does a church from Oregon find someone at 8325 Walker Road, right? And just show up on property and say, we want to partner with you. And they said, we're going to help you rebuild. And they gave us money and uh, gave us Uh, manpower and just all types of things and encouragement and they stayed with us and they actually celebrated from a distance when we got to come back into our our new building after six months so we decided we want to find that church that we can partner with so I made that announcement to you maybe three weeks ago and after that service I received five referrals from people in our church of churches that were in the affected area so that next Tuesday two days later Scott and I and Trey went down and we we just we were We went for a a couple jobs, but we also wanted to look at some churches. And it was then that we got connected to First Baptist Church in Hackberry with Monty and Renee Rouse. And uh, since that time, we've been able to send some crews, lots of crews. In fact, yesterday, I think we had 30 people go to Hackberry alone, and then others went to Lake Charles. We were able, we've been able to contribute financially to their church. We're able to supply their staff compensation till the end of this year, their entire staff compensation to the end of this year. Because of your faithful giving, we were able to make a contribution to them. We were able to offer an apartment that we have on site for them to live in. They were staying at Katy, Texas, traveling three and a half hours from there back to their work or back to their church, and we were able to offer that, and they moved in last Monday. So we've been able to partner with them. And here's what, what I think is so cool about that. These guys want to serve their city. And we get to serve them to help them serve their city. Because they've got a lot of things going on personally. But if we can come alongside them and be encouragement, they can, you know, they can increase the footprint or the influence of their church in Hackberry right now. So just like the church did for us, it's our time to do that. And we've already done it. But I want us to make that commitment that you know, we're, we're there. We're there till they get back in. And we'll be friends hereafter. But I want you to help me honor and encourage and welcome to this stage, Pastor Monty from First Baptist Church in Hackberry. Hey, hey, take, take two. We got this. 
All right, so very, very few people have made their way back to Hackberry because the power has not been restored yet. And since they haven't been able to have church, we, just, we invited First Baptist Church in Hackberry to join in with us uh, on the live feed. So I want to start out by letting you address your own people, your people. I know they want to, they, your people want to see you. They want to hear you. They, they just want to um, be connected with you. So to start this out, I want you to just address your people who may be joining in on, uh, okay. on the live stream. Guys, I just want to say um, thank you, um, first of all, to Jesus Christ, um, who is uh, above it all. And uh, you guys have been... Uh, rock solid where you're at. Um, there have been some of you that have been on the ground since day one, um, right after the hurricane, and you're, you're serving and you're helping people in the community. That's what our church has always been about. And I know that, but for many of you, you are hurting yourself and you can't serve and your home is destroyed and your homes and your, your belongings are scattered mm. and you're limping. And I, and I, and I understand that. But I, I want you to be encouraged uh, that we have been blessed uh, by the Lord to partner with this church to be an Aaron and an Ur uh, to us as Moses. Uh, we, our arms are tired. Even the servants that are serving are tired. And we are trying to, our best to come along and serve the servants is what we're trying to do. And where we as a church have been impacting the community and serving the people and ministering to the, to the people in the community, we can't do that. And that's very strange and it's very, um, it's very odd because that's who we are, who God called us to be. But since we can't, Praise Church, Pastor Reggie has ha, our, our extension of the hands and feet of Jesus when we can't do what we can do. So I just want to encourage you, and I, I'm, I'm praying for you. See my updates on Facebook, uh, Facebook page, updated every single day. And even though we may not be talking and visiting like we see each other on Sundays and throughout the week, let me encourage you to look at that and see the hand of God all over our church. The body of Christ is alive and well. Yeah. It's alive and well. Yeah. I, I want to tell you guys at First Baptist Church in Hackberry that there's a church in Beaumont that uh, has been connected with you. We feel like God has connected us, and we are going to be with you guys, and you're not alone in this, and we're going to um, support your pastor and his family and your church as you guys continue to serve your city. And this is a great moment for you guys to, to rise and shine and to leave a, a, an influence and make connections for your city in um, who knows the, the good things that will come out of this. So we're here with you. You're not forgotten. All right, so tell us a little bit. Introduce your family. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your family. We have your family right here on the front row. Just, just go around. The last time I checked, I had seven. That's the last time I checked. Um, total. Still got them. I think I got them. A total of us. Um, my, my rock other than Jesus Christ is my wife, Renee. And um, I, I tell you, you had to go into ministry and being called into ministry, your, your wife needs to be called. Uh, that's very important because honestly, uh, what we've been through and have been through all these years, and I've been in ministry since 1991, but what we have been through, some ups and downs in ministry, but this one has, has, really, has really been trying. Uh, she, has, she has been my secretary on the road. <laughs> While we're in the car, she's calling people back and responding, and, and uh, this is a plug, don't text and drive, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she's, uh, she's doing that for me, and, um, and so she has been rock solid to me, and, and I love her so very much, and she uh, loves Jesus, loves the church. And then I have twins, uh, Anna Claire and Kerrigan. Uh, they, uh, they just started Northwestern State University in Natchitoches, and for about a week and a half, and then they had to be, you know, evacuated and sent home. So uh, they come down this weekend to spend some time with us, and they evacuated with us when we went to Leesville uh, to Renee's parents. And so um, it's a blessing to have them here this weekend. Then I have Chloe, and uh, she's the middle child. Anybody middle child in here, you know what I'm saying? Um, she's a middle child. Uh, she's a great middle child, though. And then I got the 
got the, uh, the other daughter, Kinsley, and uh, she's my baby girl about to have, she's going to have a birthday next, when is it, Saturday? Is your birthday? I mean, the day of, it, it's the day, it's, it's Saturday, right? I know that. Next Saturday is her birthday. I'm losing a baby to, to be a teenager. Oh. And so, uh, y'all pray for daddy. This is not going to be easy. I'm just telling the Lord, please come back. Come on back if he wants to come back. It's going to be a heartbreaker for me on Saturday. And then we have our, uh, our, our adopted son. He's, uh, he's our son, uh, Preston. Yeah. We, we adopted him. And uh, <laughs> God's been, uh, been amazing uh, to us with uh, adopting him awesome. and, and rescuing him from where, we, where he came from. Great. So is this, you guys ready to, to do the song? I was joking with his girls earlier. I said, so you guys are going to do a special song, right? <laughs> no. I was just joking. I said okay. that was going to interview. <laughs> no special song today. Maybe next time. Do. <laughs> All right, so tell us about Hackberry. Hackberry, uh, prior to yesterday, right, anybody, any crews going, prior to yesterday or the week before, how many of you have ever been to Hackberry? Let me see your hand. Prior to yesterday. Wow. I didn't even know. I, I never had heard of Hackberry. So explain Hackberry to us. I never heard of it either. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go to Hackberry. Because you were coming from where? Listen to this. I came from Florida, from Destin uh, area. <laughs> I, when I, we, uh, my church, when, we, uh, when I, I met Renee in uh, Louisiana at a, a, a church, I was worship leader, not worship leader, I was education and uh, student ministry. And so I met her, we had the girls, and then we were there four and a half years, and God moved us uh, to Florida. And I thought, I got the best three things out of Louisiana, and I'm never coming back. <laughs> <clears throat> well, obviously, that didn't happen. But I do have <laughs> the twin, the Kinsley and Chloe were born in Florida, so they're Floridians. Uh, they will claim that. So, um, but uh, Hackberry is a, um, it's a fishing town, basically. There's people that really come all over to, to come fishing. Crab fishing, uh, crabbing, uh, shrimping is big, uh, duck hunting is big. And so there's, there's people that will travel um, miles and to come to, to, that, to that community and fish. Um, Hackberry Rod and Gun, I'll plug Hackberry Rod and Gun, guy and, and Pauline Stancil, incredible uh, lovers of Jesus. Mm. Um, Loves Jesus. In fact, one of their, I shared this earlier, that one of their uh, uh, customers, uh, she told me a couple of days ago, wants to give $10,000 yeah. to our church. Yeah, good. Uh, to bless us and to help us. And so Hackberry is probably about uh, 14, 1600. Uh, it was obviously more when before Rita, and Rita took some things out and people moved. And, and I hope, and what I'm hearing is that some people will, will leave. They, they won't rebuild. But some people all right, where are they going to go? They're resilient. This community is resilient. They love the people. That, that, that community is a, is, is a family within a family. Yeah. It really is. And you, you guys as a church draw, not just from Hackberry, right? Yeah. From what, Sulphur, Lake Charles? We draw from, yeah, we've got people driving from Carlos, which is about 15 miles up the road, then been another almost 30 miles up the road is Sulphur. Okay. Uh, people drive from Johnson Bayou south of us. Um, uh, we don't just, we're not taking in just the locals. I mean, people are driving, uh, you know, 30 minutes in Lake Charles and driving to our church and members of our church, active in our church. So, um, it's, yeah, it's far-reaching. Yeah, so talking about it, the fishing community, we were there last Saturday. We were on top of a roof and uh, just tarping it. And there was four of us up there, and then a truck stops and says, hey, you guys want some pulled pork sandwiches? Like, yes, we do. We want a lot of them. And we want some, you know, so want, want some water too. And so he got out. Well, one of the guys on the roof looked and said, Darian, ask him his name. What is his name? Because he looks like a guy that, uh, that has a TV, I mean, a, a fishing program on TV that my grandfather watches. And it actually ended up being him. And he has a camp down there where he brings his clients to go fishing. So um, that's where we learned that it was a fishing community. It is. As well. So yeah. let's just think, let's think a day or two prior to landfall, and you're watching, you guys are, we're, we're all tethered to the media, watching the news, and you're seeing, you know, the s storm surge, they're talking about storm surge, they're talking about strong, strong winds, and they're talking about coming right towards you guys. 
What's, what's going through your mind at this time? Are you familiar? Were you guys familiar with hurricanes? I mean, we lived in Florida, obviously. We, we evacuated for a couple of them. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they skirted us or they came by, but um, not, not anything major. But this one, when it was, it was going to be a two. We heard it was going to be a two. We were going to stay. Uh, but then when it started revving up to be a three and a four and possibly a five, we, we said, we're not staying. And, and so uh, we packed up. You can only pack up so much. And what do you, what do you, what do you take? I mean, you're thinking, well, what do we take this? To, what do you take? Yeah. I mean, your livelihood, your home, and your material things, we were last-minute things, trying to get um, pictures, you know, just put up somewhere so we lose pictures and stuff, and just valuables. And so I remember packing up the car, and, and we, we were leaving, and we said to the kids, basically, look at the house because it may not be here when we, we get back. And that was a weird feeling. I mean, that was really... A weird feeling I've never been in before, and our in our family has never been in before, you know. And, and and it just, but though it just still reminded me of, we're not to store up treasures here on earth, right? Mm-hmm. Where a moth and, and rust will just, will will take in and, and devour it and destroy it, or thieves will break in and steal, but we're to store treasures up in heaven, right? And so this stuff, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, for if, from a human perspective, it does matter. I mean, it, it's, it's viable to us. We see that. But I've never seen a, a, a you know, a, you know, you never see a hearse at a funeral, right? You know what I mean? I mean, you haul at a funeral, you know, you, you can't take stuff with you. Yeah. So all this stuff don't matter. But, but it was a weird feeling. We evacuated to, to Renee's parents' house in Leedsville when it came in as a, as a category two. It was still kind of rough when it, when it hit there. Uh, but we were, we were safe. Yeah, so you're going back after the storm into um, uh, Hackberry, into you know the place where your church is, and I don't know what street, what road you go. But we we were going down a road that um, where the bridge and that houseboat's in the water and yep. it's it's submerged, and as we're going down the road, the the power lines were were mm-hmm. all not all, but many of them were tilted. You were kind of scared to go yeah. under some of them, and so as you go into your city and you see the destruction, the devastation. What, what are you sensing for your people there in the city? Um, never, never, seen it, never seen this type of destruction before. And, and you, you know, you can see pictures and videos, but until your feet on the ground and until you, uh, you, you've been to a place where um, you know where things were before and now they're not, you, you know that church members in your home, in your church, to have a house here is oblivious. I mean, it's completely destroyed, flat. Um, and, and just to see when you come into the city was just, was devastating. And then go to the church and not knowing that when I have a church. Now, I did have some people res- send me some pictures. And I okay. think, well, praise God, it's still standing, you know, that's still, still up. I mean, major roof damage. Um, uh, you know, we didn't have any trees around there to, to damage the roof, but it, it just it just shingles completely off, water damage all inside the church. We just built a children's building, um, and and that that didn't that sustain minor damage. So we're able to house some some supplies and things that people are bringing us in for our, just our church members. Mm-hmm. So if they need extra things, that they can get it mm-hmm. from there. But it uh, I, I knew that when. When the surge, we talked about this before, you know, they were talking about the surge was going to be really bad. And, and to the point, even to all the way where we live in Lake Charles, it was going to be anywhere from six to nine foot. And that, that's, that's just amazing. From all the way from the coast line all the way to Lake Charles, six to nine foot of my house. Mm-hmm. And I found out and I realized there were some people that decided to ride out the storm in Hackberry, my church members. One single guy in his son decided to stay, and I know where he lives, and it's, it's not much of a, a house. And then you got these other people that have a, a very nice house and, and an older per- couple that stayed. And, and so I, when I found out they were staying, I tried to encourage them to leave because they were saying that if, if the surge hits and you have the 150-mile-an-hour winds, they were telling people to get a Sharpie out and write their Social Security number on their arms so that when they came in, they oh, could identify wow. the bodies. That, that's how serious it was. And I was concerned that, that I would have loss of life from my, my church members and not, you know, stay in. But um, 
God protected them and they stayed. And, but it, it is, it is mind-blowing to see the destruction of this community. So we have some pictures of the church. The first picture is the outside of the church, the, the major um, roof damage. Yeah. Then you had some help from the Cajun, Na- the, the the Cajun, Cajun Navy. Navy. Yep. You got to love those angels. Yeah. Um, They're fast workers, hard workers. Yeah, and they can get it done. Yeah. And you've got inside the church. The fellowship, fellowship hall. hall area, yes. Yeah. That didn't receive as, as, I mean, it received some damage, but not like, uh, not like the sanctuary in my office area and some education rooms back there. So there's but, the sanctuary. Um, you got, I was, the, got I was, the rustic look going on now. Yeah, and I was, I was saying this <laughs> earlier that, that um, this is a time we'd maybe do some modernization in the church. We, we, just, we had just kind of uh, renovated it a little bit um, and uh, nice, but... Uh, but we had an administrator from Trinity Baptist Church of Lake Charles text me yesterday, and after they gutted that whole thing, they saw the ceiling and think, now, if you want my opinion, I leave the rustic look on the ceiling. I think it looks cool. So that might be a possibility, you know, to, to do. Once you see it, I don't know if you have a picture of the whole thing gutted, but you can go to our Facebook page and you can see it gutted. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it took a major hit. There's water damage in the flooring, uh, the carpet yeah. area. So all those, all those pews and um, the carpet, are they, it's already out? Yeah. Yeah. Then you've got one more picture. So I want you to see this. This is their drum set, and I want you to see where that, that uh, breach in the ceiling is, the compromise in the ceiling. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Yeah, my but, worship leader actually took out a lot of the equipment, electronic, electronic equipment and stuff. He had already come in prior to this. Before the storm hit, I said, please make sure, you know, you get as much of the stuff off the stage and equipment off the stage as we possibly can. And obviously left the drum set, <laughs> I guess, and just thinking it would probably be okay. <laughs> um, but obviously, you see, it came right down over the drum set. Yeah. And stuff. Got you. So you're having a conversation with your missions director, Bruce, uh, the, the missions director of the Baptist Association there in Louisiana. Tell us about that conversation that you're having where you tell him, you were telling me that you were talking to him about uh, people coming alongside and helping you, and uh, including Praise Church helping. Yeah, I, I, uh, th- the same day, kind of, kind of go back, I think that was that Tuesday, uh, Pastor, that you, you, you texted me, and I had so many people calling me wanting to help. I mean, I, and, and I, I just, here's another one that wants to help. This is good. I mean, it's, it's great. And so... Um, I didn't have a chance to get to you until the drive back to Houston. Uh, and so you were the last one that I told Renee to, to text you back and say, hey, can you, do you have 10 to 12 people that can come and help us rip out pews and stuff to get, them, get the carpet out and stuff? And, but you wanted to do something more. Um, you didn't want us to just to be a weekend or, or weekends, that you were in it for the long haul. And you, you had never met me. No. You, you know my heart. You didn't know my passion. You didn't know anything about me other than just communicate with me on the phone and texting. And the next day, what you guys did, supplying the, the pay for our, our staff salary, you asked me about the staff. And, and uh, because that was a concern that I had, uh, uh, our executive director, Steve Horn, was the pastor at First Baptist Lafayette, actually came down that day. And he actually uh, spent some time with Renee and I and prayed over us and encouraged us. And I asked him, because there's 30-something Baptist churches in the state of Louisiana that was affected like our church or even worse. And I said, how are these churches going to get back on their feet? I mean, there's, they're, they're, the, the congregation is, is hurting. They, they, they're, they're not going to be able to give. I and mean, that's where your resource is. I mean, this is where your resource is at. It's for your people to support the ministry of the ongoing of the church. Yep. And I said, we can't. How are we going to do that? How am I going to pay my staff? You know, Renee's a, Renee's a teacher. You know, and, and, and I... I, did, I felt bad asking my church to, to continue to pay my salary. Now, we can't make it just on our salary. And he said, he said, Pastor, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to find churches, and churches are calling, to partner these churches with other, these other churches that can help them in ministry and supply them. And that's before I even talked to you, okay? And so, the, so after, that, after that conversation, and he left, and, and then we started that, that dialogue with you. And what you did the next day, saying you, this, we want to we want to pay a four months' salary for your your church. Well, I called our director, of Mrs. Bruce Baker, 
And I asked, and I told him, I said, and he was on his way back from Houston. And I said, Bruce, I need to, I need to tell you something. And he had it on speakerphone. His wife was in the car. And I said, I, I want you to know that, you know, Steve Horn told us about the only way we're going to make this is by partnering, have churches partnering with other churches. And I said, Praise Church out of Beaumont connected with us. And, and I said, it was a God thing. And I said, I hadn't even met the pastor, just talked to him on the phone or whatever. And I said, you realize something? You know what they're doing? They're giving our church, and tomorrow he's sending a crew out, and he said he has a check for $30,000 to take care of our salary for our staff for the next four months. Yeah. And he was silent. Yeah. And his wife said, the reason Bruce cannot talk is because he's weeping like a baby. And his wife says, if that doesn't tell you yeah. yep. that God's got his hand on your church, yep. not just in the past, but now in the future, yeah. I don't know what does. That's so good. It, it goes, we talk about this, right, Where, when you're in tough times and you say, where's God? When someone comes alongside you, it goes from where's God to there's God. And that's that moment right there where it went from where's God. Not, not you're questioning God's existence, but sometimes you just, you know, God, how? And when someone comes alongside you, whether it's a text, a call, uh, a, it, it could be anything, it goes, there's God. And it, it breathes hope. And I want you to know, because I want to link this to our series, that small things can make a big difference. And that the reason why we had $30,000 that we could just write a check and give to them immediately and say, don't worry about your salaries, your staff salaries for the next four months. Take care of your community. Take, take care of your families. The reason why we were able to do that is because you gave. And some of you gave in fives. And some of you gave in tens. Some gave a hundred. It doesn't matter. When small things can make a big difference when it's put together with a lot of things. And when we put all of our resources together and put it towards a common goal, you can make a big impact. In fact, just the idea that we are connected. I've, I, I texted him 11 days ago. I met him, I met, met these guys for the first time last Saturday at the community center there in Hackberry. And then we went off and did a, a project together. It's just the reason why we are at this relationship, and I was so excited about introducing Pastor Monty to you because I thought, I can't wait for our church to meet Pastor Monty. Basically, Pastor Monty and, and Ray, they are brothers and sisters that we've always had, but we just never met. Yeah. And I just couldn't wait to, for you because... We didn't go, we, we went in this knowing that God was going to link us to the right person. We hadn't met with another church prior to, just didn't feel the connection, just didn't feel like it was the right, the right, it was the right thing. So we pursued it. I came home from Louisiana thinking, God, I don't know, I don't know who you have for us, and, and, but, but he's made that connection. So uh, the connection was actually through one of your daughters and the daughter's friend, right? Share that with us because that's another small thing and it led to, a, to, to this, this place here. Yeah, my one that I'm going to hold on to for the next seven days or six days until she's a teenager, Kinsley, has a friend that became a friend with a girl named Anna. And this summer, she chose not to go to Tennessee with the rest of the family. She chose to go to the beach and hang out with Anna at Girl Shores. And th She's so, not bitter about that Not bitter. Just, not bitter. The, you know... Not bitter, but she, so they went to Gulf Shores. Uh, Anna's uh, mom is a single mom. Um, and there was some other, uh, her son was there and some other, I think relatives possibly was there. I don't know, or connections. But Trey, he goes here, is a cousin of a cousin or something like that. I don't know how you know how that is. <laughs> it's something so like that. And so when he was asking, he was asking, I think, um, Laura, I think Anna's, is it Laura? Anna's mom, what church could we help? And he gave three churches. And it was through that connection that we connected with Praise Church. And here's what I'd say, here's what I'm telling you. Anna and Kinsley being friends seems like a very small thing, doesn't it? But because of Anna and Kinsley being connected as a friend, God says, oh, this is bigger than just a little bitty friendship. Mm. This is so much bigger. And he exploded 
that. And it's, and it's, listen, it might have been a small pebble in a lake, but what you're watching is the ripples. That's big. You're watching the ripples. And it's, and it's continuing every single day. And whether you gave $5, and let me, I'm going to tell you something. You, you have no idea what that little bit is doing in, in the hands of of us who love, listen, we love Jesus. We love the community. It's about people. It's about investing in things that are eternal. Yeah. And so, yeah. little things make a big difference. Yeah, so, I mean, even in the process, just you and I sitting here today, having this relationship, having this, you know, this, being able to come alongside you guys and help, there were so many acts of obedience in between that even, like, I take for Trace, for example, just Trey being obedient to reach out to ask what could be done. Yeah. Was that, he, it was a small thing, it was a small phone call, but now he can look back and say, God has used me through my phone call to link a church with a church that's in need. And that's what, what the whole point of the, the series is, is that your faithfulness to small things throughout the day, ordinary things uh, can make a very, very big difference. In fact, he was talking to Bruce, and this is the missions director of the Baptist Churches of Louisiana. And he was telling Bruce about the partnership with Praise Church, and Bruce said, do you think you guys could, could uh, cut a video so that I could show the video, I could air the video, and maybe other churches in the uh, non-affected areas would adopt a church in the, the affected areas? And that's, that's just, to me, a smart way. That's just what we need to do, right? A church that's not been affected needs to find a church that's been affected. And uh, help. And Bruce said, you think they would cut a video so that I could air that, so I could get people to, uh, to come alongside other churches. So uh, we said, when it got back to us, said, absolutely, we'd be glad to provide a video. So what we're about to do right now, I'm gonna cut, we're going to cut that video right now in front of you guys. And it's just good use of all of our media, and it's a you know, good set. So I'm going to talk a little bit for about three minutes, and then Pastor Monty's going to talk for a little bit, and we're just going to then give it to our, our media team, and they'll cut that, they'll splice it in the right places, and we'll get that to the right people, and they can show it to whoever they want to and get it out. But I just want to let you know, that's what we're about to do. At the very end, I may say something about uh, our church, we're doing this in front of our church, and I would love for you to respond, you know, clap or cheer, because what you guys will do, you're, you, this will go to other churches, and I want pastors to see that it is really an opportunity to involve their church in ministry and to get people to give. And I think when you give, you change. I think it's part of our discipleship. So you can respond that way. So you guys ready for this? We're going to cut this right in front of you. All right, so <clears throat> Reg and Monty take one. <laughs> and I've, uh, it's not the center camera, Monty. It's the one right to the left of it. We did, we did this in the first service, so we'll have two to play with. Yeah. All right, so. Ready? <laughs> what voice y'all want me to do this in? This was, hi. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> hi, I'm Rick Lloyd, pastor of Praise Church in Beaumont. And in 2017, Hurricane Harvey devastated Southeast Texas, left a lot of water our church received four and a half feet, and it was many, many days that before we could even get into our facility to, to see what it looked like, and we were displaced for six months. We were meeting in other churches uh, during the afternoon. About a month into uh, the rebuild process, we were in the church pulling out sheetrock and carpet and insulation, things like that. We had two people show up at our church from Oregon. And uh, they just, they wanted to meet with me, and we were talking, and they told me that they wanted to come alongside us and help us on the rebuild, that they said, we, we will stick, whoever we pick, we will stick. And we had received a lot of phone calls, and I didn't know if they were really going to follow through on that. But until we got back into our building six months later, they stayed with us the entire process. They sent down work crews to travel by car, by van, to come help us and to stay weeks to rebuild. They sent counselors. They even sent a food truck to come and help feed our people. They provided us with money. They provided us with encouragement and support and let us know that they were with us. Throughout that process, that was a big deal. 
And we decided that when Laura hit and we weren't affected by that, we wanted to be a church like Oregon who came alongside us and we wanted to find a church in the affected area, which was not far down the road to the east of us in Louisiana. So through some referrals, we were able to find Pastor Monty and Renee from First Baptist Church in Hackberry. And since then, we've been able to send work crews. We're committed to do that on a weekly basis. We've been able to give money. We've been able to just establish a friendship and say, we're here to, to lift your hands. And we're hoping that churches in the unaffected areas would do the same for churches in those affected areas because it makes a big difference. You want to tell us what it's like, Monty, to receive a call like that? It's amazing. Okay. It's amazing because... Steve Horn came to our church the day that uh, I was going to connect with Pastor Reggie and, pa and Praise Church because I was asking the question, how are we going to survive? How are we going to make it? How are we going to restore our, our church back to where it was because our people are hurting and our people are wounded and they cannot give and they cannot serve? And he said to me, he said, the only way this is going to happen is that if a church outside of the state of Louisiana would adopt one of these hurting churches. But I had no idea what church that was going to be for us. But God did. And God directed Praise Church, Pastor Reggie, to get in contact with me and connect with me and, and began that process and that dialogue and that communication and that friendship. And it has been the one most incredible journeys in the last, I don't know how many days we've been in this, but you guys have been exceptional beyond what I can even imagine from my own, uh, my family to the church. Financially, you guys have put people on the ground. And for that, I, I can tell you that Praise Church, you ought to be very proud of what you're doing. And I'm gonna encourage every single church that wants to, to serve Christ outside of, of their, their area. Listen, there's churches that need you. See, we're not, listen, it's not just your local church. It's about kingdom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, yeah. the church is bigger than your local body. Yeah. So serve somebody. Find a church. Ask God to give you a church, and I promise you he will. Yeah, Pastor, it's a great way to get your people involved in giving. Giving is part of discipleship and they, they will thrive and flourish as they give. In fact, we're, we're shooting this video right now in front of our church right now. Praise Church, would you uh, respond? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Cut! That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was better. That, we did better that time than go. the first time. You tell me which camera. Let's I was use going that to. video, boys. You say that, you know. <laughs> I, I used. To, I mean, I was, growing up, I was on romper room when I was growing up, and I was, you know, so I'm like, okay, that TV right there, whatever. So. All right, so, <laughs> so Monty, one of the goals of serving you is so that you can serve, so that you can serve your city. Um, so. You know, being pastor in our house was, our house received water in it, and I couldn't leave our house until we took care of it to help serve our people at our church. I mean, unfortunately, I had people come up from the church and showed up real soon, and we got things done. But we want to help you serve your city because we, we know your heart, and we, we saw, I only saw you guys last week, but I saw your heart right there in the community center, you and Renee's heart. Um, you guys went off to go to do an errand, and on your way there, you got intercepted by, you know, somebody, and you guys took your time with the lady. I think it was the, the mom of the, the boy that you're going to tell us about that was driving the boat. And you said she just got saved and looked over there, and you guys were praying with her. I mean, it's like scorching hot, and you're in this parking lot, and you're taking your time, and you're praying with her. And then I, I just see your heart for your city. You, you have a shepherd's heart. It's obviously you, you love your people. And I'm not even sure, I wanted to ask this, this, you know, we were there at the community center, then we went to the lady's house um, afterwards. I, does that lady go to your church? No. So you, no. Yeah. It just, just happened to be directed, oh, there was a need over there, and then so we went there. And um, I, 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 after you guys left, um, and I just sit and just shared the gospel with her, shared Christ with her, you know, and um, 
I, I think I posted after after that. I think on Facebook I page if you if you see me coming and you don't want to know about Jesus, you better duck or run because I'm going <laughs> to tell you about Jesus. And so uh, I don't I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal. I don't care if you don't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus. You're lost. Yeah, and that's that's the most important thing. So we were in the parking lot and uh, someone said, hey, there's this lady, they need some help. And I just, I thought they were part of your church. So we just followed you over there. And uh, it's, it's those types of things that show your heart because she didn't even have to be at your church for you and your wife to go and, and to work. And when she's, I don't know what she knows about Jesus or what she thinks, but he got a little sweeter that day for her. Because someone was willing to do something. On a, on a funny note, there was a guy there when we got there. He was from like Wisconsin or something. Oh, Thomas, yeah, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, it's all the same. Thomas guy, right? <laughs> it's close, Jimmy. Close. And so, somebody's from Pennsylvania. He drove down from Pennsylvania and he was living in a tent. Listen, it's, it's like it was. It's got to be 200 degrees out there that day. He's living in a tent in the backyard, and he was, he was loud. He was just, he was, you know, I, and I just looked at him. I started calling him John the Baptist because that's what he looked like. <laughs> I called him John the Baptist. You know what? He is, his name is Ethan. Ethan the farmer. Check him out. Go Google him. Ethan the farmer. He told me he drove uh, llamas. Did he tell you the story? During President Trump's inauguration, he, he, He's like driving llamas through this parade or something. Yeah, it's really weird. It's funny. So, uh, Ethan the farmer. Only right. in Hackberry. Only in Hackberry. <laughs> in Hackberry. All right, so uh, you, make it, you guys are making a difference. And I, I want you to, to close out because this is sad but super encouraging at the same time. But whatever, a couple weeks prior to the storm, you, your community, your church experienced the death of a young man, and, but it resulted in lots of salvations. Will you, will you tell us a little bit about that? The young man, the young man that died, his name is Ross Broussard, and he was the 19-year-old son of my secretary. He you know, was also a good friend of our families, and he worked in our sound booth. He was also did maintenance, uh, on the, a lawn maintenance, he had a lawn maintenance company, and so he he did maintenance, and so one night he was, uh, actually it was like two weeks prior to the storm, like the night, two weeks exactly from the night the storm hit, he was out, he was him and his buddy, found out there was a boat stranded out in the canal, in the ship channel, and he just wanted to go and help, and that was Ross. But a small community, community like that where everybody knows everybody, his family within the family, when that death happened, it absolutely, uh, it rocked that community. Um, obviously, you know what it did to the family. And then you, got a, then you got a family whose son was driving the boat, Seth. And that's the mama we were talking to that day, Cassie, in that, in that community parking lot. And, and to pray for them, they're, they're, Seth's still going through a real difficult time. But I saw, and I, I shared in, in the, my service, my worship, the sermon to the community the day after that tragedy, Sunday after tragedy, I said, you know, um, what I saw in, in with Teresa and Max and the loss of their son, I saw worship. From the day that I was out there for them waiting to retrieve the body, I saw Max and Teresa praising Jesus. And that impact on that community and uh, in Ross's life, uh, God was tilling the soil. I had three people, two, three people get saved at that, that service online on that Sunday. And then we had a funeral service on at the gym. It was packed. And I had them, I just shared Jesus. That's who I am. I'm going to share Jesus with you. If you don't know Christ, I'm going to share with you. It's the most important thing. And so at the end of that service, I, I presented the gospel, and I said, if I can have an altar call in the gym, I didn't know how to do that. But I said, if you wanted Jesus, take out your cell phones. Everybody got cell phones. 
Would you text this number? Would you text to that number, Jesus follower? And 25 people gave their lives to Jesus. And that, and that gym. I had people, I had people, Reggie, that, I had people that said, when is your church opening up? When, is your, when are you going to open church back up? And I said, look, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday. We're coming to your church. We're coming to your church. Yep. Yep. And I was expecting, a, I mean, just where we're going to put the people. And I, I truly believe that. We're going to have the overflow room. We'll do that. But I wonder where the people were going to, you know, where we're going to put the people. And then Hurricane Laura hit. Yeah. And I said, God, why? You know what, by the way, it's okay to ask God why. Anybody ever tells you, you're never supposed to question God. I don't find that anywhere in the Bible. It's nowhere. David did it. Job did it. Everybody did it. I mean, just, it, it's, but God had a bigger plan. And, and, and what God shared with me after that death of Ross and after the hurricane, I said, God, my, my people are scattered. My people are hurting. And the people that are saved, they, they have no place to come to. He ask him, what are you doing? He said, two weeks ago, I was tilling the soil of this community. And I'm still tilling it. Yeah. And today, I don't want you to look at it. You're, you, you, are, you are a person of faith. You are my child. And as children of God, sons and daughters of God, we walk by faith, not by sight. So when we start sinking and we start feeling depressed and we start getting down, it's because our sight has become physical and not by faith. Yeah. And so start looking up with your faith. You need to stick with faith. And so what I saw was God said, look up. I don't want to see, I don't want you to see with physical eyes the destruction and the people with no homes in your church and all those things. I want you to see something else. I want you to see just like the when when the Jesus says, to the disciples, look, when the Samaritans, from the Samaritan woman, when the Samaritans were, were from the people of the city were coming to, to come to Jesus, and the disciples were thinking, those people, we don't like those people. We don't connect with those people. We, we, don't, we, we despise those people. Yet Jesus told them, look, here's the deal. Don't look at them as Samaritans. But he says, look at the fields. They're wide into harvest. And so here's what I'm thinking. He's telling me, don't look at the destruction. Look at this and know that the fields are still wide under harvest. And you guys, wow. you guys, your church, no. are allowing us yeah. to minister to the community yeah. that way. I'm you, it, it's been so encouraging to watch people go to go on these crews and you guys going. And I know not everybody can go, but just to see people and to, to offer up people in our church that's got heavy equipment being able to go and make the jobs easier. But I just want, I want, I want to remind you, you guys know exactly what it's like to be, uh, to have the effects of a hurricane. But let me remind you, um, life still happens during a hurricane, but it is so much more complicated. So for instance, they have a prescription that needs to be filled. They can't get it filled in Texas because they're out of state and they're gonna have to travel to, if we can't help out to Leesville, which is an hour, two and a half hours from here, right? So it's an hour out of the way that, that you shouldn't. Not only that, he had, it, he had one of his deacons pass away yesterday. He wasn't, we didn't share this with first service, but I just want you to know, life still happens while a hurricane. So one of his deacons, someone that was a, a huge supporter of his and encouragement of his, a buddy of his, passed away yesterday. And then he's got, you know, you're telling me about that, that house you're gonna try to get tarped today for the lady who, you know, they're still getting water in their home. And you're concerned. He's concerned about this one house. And then, obviously, you got a storm coming. We didn't even talk about that at all. A, a potential storm coming, you know, what, next week sometimes. So life still happens. I mean, that's just enough already in itself. But then you got a family, two girls in college. And you've got, you know, you've got a family to manage. You've got school to do. You've got bills. You've got all that. So I just want, I want you to see that we get to come alongside a family who loves God, and who is serving their city, and we get to do you know, our small part that is gonna make a big difference, amen? I and mean, that's just what we get to do every single 
every single day you have the opportunity to do that. So before we, uh, I, I just want to, I want to close out and pray. Oh yeah, uh, you already know this because we revealed it in first service. But remember that, remember the picture I showed you of the drums earlier in the church? And it had the compromised roof right, roof right above the drums and the water had come down on the drum set. So three weeks ago, I had mentioned that we were going to connect with some church in Louisiana. But I didn't tell you, but I told you I don't know what church that is because we didn't have any relationships with churches in Louisiana yet. And after that service, I had one of our uh, guys come to me after service and he said, whatever church that we partner with, I want you to know I have a drum set I want to donate. <laughs> yeah, here's a picture of the drum set. Come on! Woo! <laughs> oh, amazing. This is so good. So we, let's lift up. Why don't you join me and let's lift up Pastor Monty and, and uh, Renee. God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you take care of us even in uh, very trying times. God, I pray that you would uh, let the peace of God guard Monty Renee and their family. God, that you've raised them up to be leaders and shepherds in a city at this time for a purpose. And God, that you would strengthen them and you'd strengthen their heart and you would encourage their heart and that you would send uh, people alongside them to lift them up and to um, just hold their hands up. God, I pray that you would give them rest in their bodies, that the little bit of rest that they have would go a long, long way. And God, that personally, that you would continue to provide for their finances, and that it wouldn't be a concern, it wouldn't be something that they have to spend mental energy on, that you are our provider. God, I think that you're raising up a church, that you have raised up a church in Hackberry to demonstrate and to show the surrounding area who you are and how good you are. And God, I thank you that you have allowed us to have this opportunity that we get to partner with them in just a little way of serving their city. God, we thank you for your goodness and thank you that you have given us an eternal perspective and not just a, a temporary one. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. So here's how we're going forward. Each week, at, at least for now, we're sending work crews. You can sign up to do that by going to praisechurch.tv, hit on the serve tab. It's right on the homepage. And then next to it is a give tab if you want to contribute financially as well. You can do that. And uh, we're just, you know, these things have phases and phases change and we're just going to try to figure out what the need is and see how we can come alongside. We don't want too many cooks in the kitchen for these guys. We don't want to get in their way, but we want to help, uh, help them along the way. So we're going to do that. One more, uh, September the 27th, we are having, we're celebrating water baptism. New life in Christ. So if you haven't been baptized, we would love to celebrate right here. We haven't been able to do this for a while because of COVID, but we have two tanks now, and we are going to celebrate on the 27th, Praise Church style. If you're not a part of a small group, you need to check that out. We have small groups going down to Hackberry as a team. And not only are we building relationships through Bible study and meeting together weekly, we get to serve together as well. And it is very, very rich to go down and to serve that way. And uh, if you come prepared to give on site, we have uh, black boxes at the back of the church. You can drop that in. If not, you can give online. So why don't you stand and let me pronounce the blessing over you before we head out. I love, I just love looking out and just, I just take snapshots with my eyes and see you and see pictures of people we get to walk this with. We get to serve together. We get to worship together. We get to grow together. This is, this is us, right? May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine down upon you. May he turn his countenance upon you, turn his countenance upon your family. May he grant you his peace, his shalom that will guard your heart and will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. I bless you in the name that is higher than any other name. That name is Jesus our Savior. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being at Praise.